Hey everyone, thanks for signing in. We just have two minutes to go. Thanks for your patience. Hey everyone, thanks for signing in and I welcome you all. We still have a few people logging in, so let's give them a few minutes and then we can get going. I can see new names popping in. Just give us a few minutes. Okay, I think we are ready to go. First of all, thanks for joining for today's webinar. Today, we are going to talk about enabling remote workforce with digital workplace solution. I'll just start with introducing myself. This is Sukanya Chakravarti. I'm a digital transformation strategist working for Saketa. And I have been helping and guiding customers in effectively utilizing SharePoint as a platform and letting them see how it can be made more productive using our Saketa suite. And I'm your host for the day. Now, coming to the agenda of the webinar. Today, we'll be covering the challenges in enabling communication with remote workforce, planning a digital workforce, then using Microsoft 365 tools for crisis communication. This will be followed by setting up a digital workplace, which will be a demo by Saketa team. This will further be followed by Microsoft 365 best practices for a digital workplace. And then it will be taken forward by Cardiolog's portrayal of utilizing their analytics tools in a digital workplace to their best. Now, before we proceed further, I believe you must be curious to know about the organizing company. We are called Saketa, and ever since our inception, we have been known for the best utilization of Microsoft 365 and SharePoint on-prem through our popular SharePoint migration and digital workplace solutions. We provide SharePoint deployable apps, including the SharePoint intranet, SharePoint Migrator, and Business Productivity Suite. Our prime objective lies in enriching your Microsoft 365 and SharePoint experience to give you a confident, hassle-free work environment. Do check out our website to know more. Along with us, we have Cardiolog Analytics as our organizing partner for today. Cardiolog has always been a pioneer in the field of integrating analytics to bring in engagement to SharePoint and other related services. Now, let me introduce you to the three of our esteemed presenters. We have Mr. Venkatesh Kumar, who is a Microsoft 365 consultant working for Saketa. He has a very sound knowledge and specialization in Microsoft Azure and other SharePoint technologies. In free time, he loves singing and dancing and exploring the universe through various videos. Then we have our next presenter, Mr. Shubrato Kumar Pati, who is a Microsoft 365 consultant and he specializes in Office 365 and Microsoft Azure. He is very passionate about helping customers in leveraging Microsoft 365. In free time, he loves exploring new technologies indulging in sports like cricket. After that, we have Mr. Ombi Negri, who is a business development manager with Cardiolog Analytics, and he helps his clients achieve remarkable business growth through their wonderful analytics tools. Now, before I hand over to our speakers, let's quickly cover a few housekeeping rules. Today's webinar is being recorded we are able to share a link with you after the event is done. You are welcome to revisit or share with your friends. Please mute your mics to avoid any kind of audio disruptions. We'll have a Q&A session after the presentation and all your queries are welcome. Meanwhile, we'll keep a check at the comment box too. If you have any question, we'll get back to you. Now, before we get started, I would request you to take a quick poll so that it can help us ensure we deliver only the best to you. The poll is on your screen. I request you to take it.
thank you so much for taking this up i really appreciate it now without any further delay let's just jump in and start with our first speaker venkatesh i request you to take over from him thank you sukanya hi all how are you all doing not a huge surprise considering significant improvement in technology that has happened over this time adapting our own schedule and working together without the need to consider commuting makes us much happier of course remote work is not new but with more and more people working remotely especially in this difficult time different challenges has emerged for me personally being engaged and focused for a long span of time is quite difficult considering the comfy factors at our home around 32% of people working remotely agrees with me with lack of engagement and focus it also hampers our productivity adding to it it is the changes that we have to go in adopting the new tools for communication and collaboration with the team it feels like if you took someone out of an 18th century farm and dropped them directly into a 21st century city they wouldn't understand automobiles traffic lights road markings verbal cues or even finger gestures they would almost certainly hurt themselves or someone else if they survive they would probably flee the city to get back to something more comfortable and this happens in our digital offices all the time so planning plays a pivotal role in setting up a digital workplace the first step that we need to take in planning is determining what our employee needs scheduling workshops to explain and align the employees to the strategy conduct surveys to understand their attitude towards technology in general and at work gather information to help identify the information needs and what would be most beneficial in helping them achieve their goals and encourage collaboration we need to form focus groups and meet with them to talk about what they do this will provide insights in how to go about making the changes and what changes need to be made next we need to categorize these into meaningful categories we also need to identify the right tools which will help us in setting up the workplace once these are all done we can plan and deliver a common employee experience we also need to have feedback from employees we need to meet the stakeholders to make sure the priorities and recommendations for changes are aligned with their needs define the scope create an action plan and prioritize these once we are done with all these steps we would need to align strategy and vision to our needs building the building a communication plan for communicating to the whole organization sharing the vision across the organization and continue to receive feedback selecting the best technology for implementation as part of the digital workplace initiative setting up governance is equally important because it help us to define the policies in our company establish an informa information governance council to establish the policies identify and draft the policies and procedures that are needed set up a governance model build a comprehensive training plan our digital workplace sits on four pillars content collaboration automation and insights important files blogs news articles help us to find relevant information regarding our work and company policies a digital workplace should be easier to collaborate regardless of location corporate news people profiles community sites are all important parts of collaboration clear and timely communication is critical to everything from a growing company to managing a crisis to dealing with an unprecedented level of change a solid digital workplace makes it easier than ever not only automate routine process but also to speed the process of collaborating on those processes no more emailing at spreadsheet around to get 
updates or sending a document to a chain of three people where each makes their modifications. Forms, list, workflows are usually good targets for automation within SharePoint, Office Pipe, or other digital workplaces too. Insights. Insights help us in enabling data scientists to analyze big data, discover new insights, aid executives in making better decisions in critically important. And these three pillars sits on three layered foundation, roadmap, governance, and change management. Typically, we create a roadmap that outlines achievable priorities. We spend a couple of days planning and making some important decisions upfront. What low hanging fruit or quick win? Then we work together on our roadmap items to fruition. Governance is always important and not just for when you roll out Microsoft Teams or start encouraging Microsoft team sites on SharePoint. It is important to plan a place so you don't have the wild west or users having a bad experience in not adopting the tool set. Change management. We always incorporate change management, user adoption, governance into the conversation about digital transformation. If you are taking on a project like this, then we need to involve champions, evangelists, and other stakeholders early in the project. They can make change management easier because they're already supporting the technology and demonstrating how it can make our average users work life better and more cohesive. Microsoft provides a various set of tools. Microsoft SharePoint, a key platform for content collaboration. Microsoft Teams, the platform for Teams communication. Microsoft OneDrive for business for personalized file storage and management. Power Apps and Power Automate for automations. And we can always use Power BI to get useful insights. SharePoint is a great platform for crisis management and you can manage tools very quickly. The purpose of this crisis management portal is to capture all information that the organization wants to share during this time of pandemic. That effectively educates the employee on proper guidance in the practices and also help them to have a channel for communication. All this with articles, blogs, news items created very effectively. It is a wonderful tool. Teams is not only an effective solution, but also helps in enabling and creating company-wide teams is a great way for sharing any kind of information. With most of us adopting a of teams for getting our work done, it makes sense to have a company-wide teams channel where all the company vital communication, employee messages, and engagement stories, which enables talent and culture to grow in this tough times. While this is all good, you can always extend beyond the capabilities with the help of Power Platform. Over to Subrato, where he explains how to use Power Platform for effective crisis communication. Thanks, Vankadesh, for such an insightful presentation. While Subrato sets up, let's get to another quick poll so that we can access your problems properly and find out apt solutions to them. I request you to take up this poll. It's on your screen. Polls are quite useful to upgrade our user experience. It will be great if you take them up. Thank you so much for participating. Really appreciate it. Now I hand it over to Subrito. Thanks, Sukanya. Thank you, Venkatesh. It was very insightful on how we can use SharePoint and Teams for crisis communication. Let me talk further on how Power Apps can be helpful for the same. The crisis communication app provides a user friendly experience to connect users with information about crisis. Quickly get updates on internal company news. Get answers to frequently asked questions 
and get access to important information like quick links and emergency contacts. Namely, the apps that are essential for com crisis communication are emergency contacts, company news, helpful tips, quick links, and FAQs. This is the Microsoft provided template for crisis communication built in Power Apps. This requires a little bit of prerequisite planning, which is as simple as connecting the right data sources, creating content for the app, creating a flow to send in notification to users, creating a centrally managed team to aggregate data and to effectively respond to issues. I know there must be some questions regarding the crisis communication app, which we'll be able to help in our Q&A section. Now let us see how a wildlife organization that manages internal staff, large number of park rangers on the field and employees can adapt a digital workplace for effective communication and collaboration. And all of this is possible with the power of Office 365 and Saketa Intran Suite. So this is the start experience of the corporate portal where the employees can get all the information about the events that are happening day to day in the organization. What we see here as soon as we enter is the informative news that is getting showcased and updated along with the quick access to all the vital tools that make our day productive. It is necessary to have quick access to the day to day application through the portal like timesheets, organization charts and others, which we can always reconfigure as per our requirement. Coming to the image gallery with all the mesmerizing moments spent together as an organization, having an image gallery keeps the employees connected to each other, reminding them about the good times. Enlisting all the upcoming organization wide events can help in boosting the employee engagement. May it be the anniversary or monthly corporate event. Rewards and recognition helps the organization to keep the employees motivated and bring cheers. Further going down, we have company social feed for social engagement from various channels like Yammer or Facebook, which help the employees to stay connected socially. Moving to the various departments, which we keep our essential processes running. Human resource department. May it be the onboarding or the offboarding of the employee. The process should go smooth for a better experience from finding the policy documents to completing the on joining checklist from handling the employees grievances to celebrating the hard work of our colleagues. There is an HR portal for managing the employee relation in a digital workplace. Coming to the finance department, which somehow we don't forget to remember by the month end. All the policy documents related to the finance, the monthly expenditure claims, the status of our claims, and what are the changes in the finance for this fiscal year. This all needs a space where the employees can have an easy access. Coming to MySpace, which is the private space for the employee, which helps the employee to access his information in one place, may it be the daily tasks, important emails, or the personal documents that one needs quick access to. Now let us see why this digital workplace was very empowering for the wildlife conservation organization. And I'm sure you would have some questions and you have been looking to employ such a case. 
for that i have few best practices to share in order to make digital workplace effective for you as comes the scope the digital workplace can have a very wide scope with a broad range of functionality capabilities and content often the wider the scope the more potential value our digital workplace will deliver to our employees in working out what we want our digital workplace to be it's critical to have not to have a traditional internet mindset and focus just on news publishing and static content consider how employees do their work what will deliver value the key processes in our organization and outcomes such as increased productivity and even digital transformation in considering a wide scope of digital workplace several elements were outlined including communication collaboration projects tools standards and procedures employee self service and processes if that scope sounds ambitious that's because it is but it's worth remembering that the digital workplace is a platform which evolves having a wide scope from the start means that we can build up a platform in a way so that it can keep on expanding and delivering value secondly standard products and limited customizations using the standard product functionality for our digital workplace has many advantages it's far easier to maintain and cheaper to run quicker to introduce changes and our digital workplace keeps on expanding we are taking advantage of a platform which keeps on improving particularly if we are in the cloud rather than on premises customizing our entire digital workplace comes with risks and it's expensive time consuming and may not be compatible with the latest updates it will mean there will be more work involved with any upgrade to our platform and a higher risk of issues we know that in complex organization or for particular processes sometimes customization is needed however we strongly recommend limiting the level of customization to only where our business has particular complex needs and will truly deliver value thirdly invest in search because finding information is important search is an essential part of the digital workplace as soon as we start building an experience with a wider scope beyond the traditional publishing intranet we also create an expectation from users that they will be able to search for everything in one place our users are also used to using google and will expect have a similar capability to tap in just one word and find everything sharepoint has a great search engine which works well out of the box but we will only start really getting it the value when we invest some time and resources in configuring the search establishing some governance and working on a pattern of continuous improvement last not the least is multilingual having a multilingual policy and a digital workplace that actually works on day to day basis to meet people's need can have a significant impact on both productivity but also employee engagement especially for employees in country offices who may feel disconnected from the global headquarters i hope this information is helpful in planning the digital workplace for the organizations so once we are ready with our digital workplace it is important to have the analytics integrated to the digital workplace for which i would like omri negri from cardilog analytics to tell us further thank you subrato i hope it must have been quite useful to our esteemed listeners now before our friend omri from cardilog takes it over let me give you one more poll so that we can get to know your problems and opinions better i request you to take up this poll Meanwhile, let me remind you, we'll have a Q and A session coming up. If you have any question about anything, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for responding. I really appreciate it. Now, Omri, it's all yours. Hi. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for Sakita team for um, the very interesting look. So I'm going to start with an introduction of Cardiolog Analytics, who we are and what we do. And after that, I'm going to dive to the demonstration discussing analytics and why they are important for your adoption rates. So we provide 
analytics and engagement solutions for Office 365. We started about 15 years ago with SharePoint and we grew with Microsoft into the cloud. And now we provide analytics for the entire Office 365 suite, including all versions of SharePoint, um, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, Exchange, really anything within Office 365. So when we're talking about adoption, it's very important to understand why adoption is so important. So I think that it's kind of, um, you know, in the back of, of our minds, we kind of know why adoption is important, but let's discuss it a little bit. So obviously we put a lot of money into the different platforms, whether it's, you know, uh, the newest versions of SharePoint or moving into Microsoft Teams. And we want to see that people are using the things that we are putting um, you know, our time and money into. But this is a very shallow look of adoption because this is not, we didn't just you know, did all this work for people to only use it. We want to see that people work improve as they learn how to use the different platforms more and that the productivity increases as they use the, the different platforms more. We don't just want them to use Microsoft Teams. We want to see how their actual daily work um, changes as a result of the usage of Microsoft Teams. And as I said, and um, to clarify, when we're talking about adoption, you have to have a clear adoption plan. You can't just, you know, implement the different resources, just give your employees the training and just set them off to explore because it's very hard for people to accept any new changes and you need to be with your hand on the pulse to always check out if people are doing what they need to do, if they understand how to use it. So an, an adoption plan is very important. So after understanding that adoption is important, we need to start asking questions. What questions can lead us to understand how we can improve to improve um, the end user's um, journey throughout the platforms? Questions like, where is my Office 365 adoption lower? How many people are using the SharePoint portal? Um, what are most users doing within Microsoft Teams? And these are just examples. So I am here right now to shed some light exactly on these questions, to answer them, to give you a look of not only the questions that you need to ask, but what answers you'll get and what actions you can take with these answers. And before I dive into the demonstration itself, it's very important to understand that you cannot um, change or improve something that you don't know anything about. So you can't improve the usage of Office 365 if you don't know how people are using it. And I'm not just talking about you know, the basic understanding if the person A access or doesn't access a specific document within SharePoint, for example, we want a deeper dive in, understanding the whole journey of people within our environment, understanding what they're doing and what they're looking for, how we can help them. So just a short schematic overview before I dive into the demonstration. This is how um, we do uh, what we do. So first we approach the data source, as I said, could be any version of SharePoint and any um, application within Office 365. We use different um, mechanisms to capture the data, mainly JavaScript tracking and the APIs. After that, the data is being processed and stored within Microsoft Azure. And as you will see in a moment, visualized with Power BI. So let me go ahead and dive into the analytics itself. So right now you are looking at the first dashboard of Cardiolog Analytics, the usage overview. This gives us a brief introduction to analytics. We see here metrics revolving around 
content, adoption, and search. And we see some basic metrics. On the far left side of my page, you can see many tabs. So each tab is a pre-built dashboard that you will get from day one. So you don't have to you know, see the raw data and then try to make your own dashboards and your own visualization. Everything comes from day one. To the right of that, we can see the portal tree filter or SharePoint's hierarchy. We can drill down and take a look all the way to the sole page, to the lists and libraries, and can click on any of these pages, and you will see how the entire dashboard will filter itself to show me data for the requested page. So this is one way to filter the data. If you want to take a look at the individual page or several pages or an entire site, for example. But let's say that you want to uh, put a lot of effort into a specific content type. So for that, we have the upper tabs. As you can see, um, each of them is a different content type. And again, you can click on any of them and take a look how people are using the blogs or wikis or documents, for example. And the great thing about Power BI is that you can combine these different segmentations. So you can choose um, a few pages, even a few sites, and then take a look on these specific pages for specific content types, which gives us an understanding of uh, specific questions that we ask. It makes us uh, focus on specific issues. So next, I'm going to full screen the table at the bottom of my page. Here we can see some basic metrics. So we can see the pages themselves, how many page views each page um, has, and um, other basic metrics that you see here, like timing, size, and everything else. So by default, I'm showing the most viewed pages, but I can also go the other way around and show you the least viewed pages. So here we can already have some conclusions. We can see which pages are not being used that much. And now we can take a look at them. Maybe some of them just are old and irrelevant and can be archived, or maybe we, can, we will discover that some of them are new and we just put a lot of effort into them, but no one used them because they don't know they exist. So now we need to surface them, take action, and let people know that they're here. So next I want to look into the under the adoption column. Here we can see the usage rate through the different departments. So let's say that you want to take your organization through a training session, but you don't know who need this training session. Then you can take a look here and see which departments need it the most. But I can also drill down here and take a look at the individual level. So by name, who uses and who does not use SharePoint. So maybe here we can take action and just offer individual training sessions for specific people under uh, the department that really need this uh, training or explanation. So this is a basic view of metrics. You know, what is popular, when did people enter it, but as I said, we want to take a deeper dive into analytics and what they mean. So in the visitor adoption overview, we take one step deeper. So on the right side of my page, you can see different metrics. The average page, the average depth of visit or the single page visit rate are very important metrics that tells us how comfortable people feel with the environment. Here you can, uh, tell how many people are just, you know, entering the home page of SharePoint and leaving instantly or just, you know, keeping it open for the entire day because they don't know what to do with it. Or what is the average depth? Maybe we will discover that people only enter, you know, one page, then leave, then one page, then leave. And that's a really big waste of time instead of just uh, going through an entire journey from page to page. So next, I want to take a look 
into search. What are people searching on SharePoint and what results they're getting? So at the um, bottom left side of my page, you can see the top search terms. And if I'll click on benefits, which is the most searched terms, I can see that benefits has been searched more than a thousand times. So a thousand times 60 seconds per search, that's a huge waste of time for your organization. But the metric that actually worries me is the metrics, the metric at the um, middle top side of my page that tells us that only about half of the people that searched benefits uh, clicked on any of the results, which means that half of them had to go and waste even more time uh, searching for the answer elsewhere. And to the right of that, we can see the actual bottom line. How much money is being wasted um, because of people that um, are failing to find answers or failing to search? So failed searches can be either uh, not clicking on any of the results or just not getting any results, searching something that gives us no results, which means that people just basically wasted their time for nothing. Next, we can take a look at slow pages. At the bottom left side of the page, we can see the time that it takes for the different pages to load. And um, now we can take action. Here we can discover that maybe some pages have a lot of content on them, like many videos and links and different um, properties. And now it takes a couple of seconds even to load. So Maybe we don't think of it uh, much because it's just a couple of seconds. But if it happens more than once, if it happens multiple time, times, it will get, it will make people feel like the entire um, portal is not really good, and it will make them want to use it less. And again, at the corner um, of the top right side of my page, you can see the bottom line. Um, we're not thinking about it, but when we're talking about enterprises, about hundreds or even thousands of users, waiting these couple of seconds every page can really add up. And we're not thinking about it, but it actually slows down and wastes money for everyone. And we can see the visitor technology, what they use when they enter SharePoint whether it's a um, PC or mobile, for example, here we can detect because some features of SharePoint are specific. We want people to use them on their mobile, specifically when we're talking about the social aspect of Office 365. We want to make sure that people are engaging um, not only on their computers while they're working. So this is a good indicator what, how people use these different platforms. Next, I'll dive a little bit into page interaction. Again, this is very important. So until now, we saw general information about pages, if people visit them, um, how long they spent on them. But we want to understand what people do when they are on specific pages. This is very important. So under the page interaction column, I'll click on the home page. And you, we can see to the right the page elements within home page. We can see that the home page have um, three elements. We can see that one of them is an input, the other is a button, and the third is a link. And we can see how many interactions each of them um, has. So this is very important when we're talking about adoption. Now we know not only that people enter the home page, but we know exactly what they're doing on the home page. So when we're talking about navigation, this can really be confusing a little bit because why do I care how people move from page to page? They can do whatever they want. But again, we want to make sure that people find the things that they need um, the fastest. So here we can detect not only how they move from page to page or what um, pages lead to other pages, 
we can detect an entire journey of a group of people to understand the pattern of how they use SharePoint. Um, so it can be very helpful. Let's say that we have discovered in the beginning that there's a very important uh, or popular page, but it takes at least um, six clicks, six different pages to get to. That is a huge waste of time. And here we can detect that, how people move from page to page. So many of our customers are subscribed to different resources that they think their employees will benefit from. Um, so these are links that take them outside of SharePoint. And we don't know sometimes if people use these links. So again, at the bottom left side of my page, you can see the external links themselves. And we can see how many times they have been clicked. Um, so again, to understand, maybe some of these resources are irrelevant. We don't need them at all. We can just um, forget about them. But maybe some of them are super important. People like them. Let's surface them even more. Let's let more people know that they exist. So as you can see, there are many more dashboards here. Obviously, I won't take you through all of them. But in one sentence, we can help you see any action that's happening on Office 365. So whether it's SharePoint or when, if we're talking about Microsoft Teams, um, how many people are using um, Teams messaging instead of email or how, uh, how many people are using conference calls within Teams. and it's very helpful to compare different systems within Office 365 to understand the usage. So comparing um, the usage of Microsoft Teams to Exchange or comparing SharePoint to OneDrive, for example, can really help us understand um, what we need to do to improve the portal, how people use it. So from over the years, we learned from our customers that although these metrics are super helpful, sometimes it's just not enough. It's not enough to see the numbers and different statistics. We want to engage with the end users, to hear from them, to understand their experience, and to understand how we can improve the platform for them. So for that, we have Cardilog Engage. This is a complementary piece to the analytics that allows you to create a campaign to get engaged with your end users to understand all of these questions. So here you can see a bunch of pre-built campaigns for maybe promoting a page or notifying about a change, but let's all together create a campaign from scratch. So first we'll choose the audience. Maybe it's everyone telling them about the deployment of Microsoft Teams, for example. Or let's say that in the first dashboard, I've noticed that a specific department are not using um, SharePoint all that much. So let's say that I have detected that the marketing team are not really using SharePoint. So maybe I want to contact them to increase adoption. But maybe I don't want to contact everyone within marketing, only then active users. So users who did not visit for more than five days or 14 days even. Next, we'll choose the channel. Maybe it's an in-app message, like a pop-up that appears on their SharePoint screen, or a header or a footer that goes on SharePoint's whole page. Or even when we're talking about in-app messages, maybe they'll get a, a message in Teams asking them for feedback, for example. But for our example, marketing users who do not use SharePoint, they won't see all these pop-ups because, well, they don't enter SharePoint. So maybe they'll get a targeted text message or an email with a link that is specifically meant for them that you know already that will help them. Next, we can text and design it in any way we'd like. So we can have a title and a description, and then we can ask for the response. 
maybe we want them to rate a specific feature or a page. We can have different methods of rating. Or maybe we want to ask a question and receive their answer. And the thing that is very important about this piece is that it helps you to reduce the amount of emails uh, you send your employees regarding feedback because most of them, well, they're either busy or it's not relevant for this exact moment. So how do we help with that? We can either schedule a, um, a message for them, a pop-up, but we can uh, trigger it. Maybe when they're scrolling down a page, a pop-up appears. Or when they are viewing a page, interacting with a specific feature within Office 365, or when they're viewing a search result, for example, for more than 45 seconds. So imagine someone just searched um, benefits, and he's scrolling through the results, not clicking on any of them because they don't answer his question. And while he's failing to find an answer, a pop-up appears on his screen asking him, hey, what went wrong? Or what are you searching for? And with these type of answers, you can really help your end users to reach the full potential of their Office 365 usage. So um, to summarize this part, having the analytics and the end user's experience can really help you understand what actions you need to take to improve your entire platform and how you can move forward with your adoption plan to make sure that people use Office 365 in the way that you intended them to use it when you first wanted it. So now I want to bring um, the lead um, back to Sakira team. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Omri, for such minute details into the usability of analytics and letting us know how analytics can do wonders when amalgamated with the digital workplace solution. It's been quite insightful. Now, I can see several questions pouring over from our audience. Let's get to them one by one. The first question is, how do we make the plain SharePoint portal more engaging for our employees. So let me uh, let me say my answer on that, and let me try to help you with that. Employee engagement is very important piece, as we all know, and we need to keep all our vital tools in place. We need to encourage our employees with rewards and collaboration within the portal. Further going with all the latest events, information, and the news showcased, having Having a social media portal, having social media a part of it will help to have a more engaging digital workplace. We should also conduct internal polls, post images of our social moments that will allow our users to have a more engaging experience. And finally, we can also have blogs because blogs are, blogs are more insightful Suppose if somebody is having any issues while navigating to the information, a blog always helps. So I hope my answers help answer your question. Yeah, thank you for the reply. Now, before we proceed to the next question, let me share the last poll of the day with you. Thank you so much for responding again and again. It is very useful for us. Thank you so much for taking it up. Now, let me ask the next question, which is for Omri. It says, how do you understand our employee engagement and send a note to collaborate better? I repeat, how do you understand our employee engagement and send a note to collaborate better? Sure, so that's a very um, interesting question. So I think that understanding employee engagement is very important, and I think that it has multiple levels. And I think that most of all, it uh, comes back to what are your goals and understanding the employee engagement. So it can be um, either with using our engage tool and asking them directly, 
or if you set yourself a goal, maybe you're using a specific feature on Office 365, a specific Power App, and you want to make sure that people are using it, so or engaging with this Power App, or engaging even with each other, you can always look at the data that we cover that shows obviously all of that. We can show all of the engagement between um, employees to each other, between the end users and the system, for example, um, or even your engagement with your end users with Engage. So I hope that I answered the question. Thank you so much for answering, Omri. It was quite insightful. Now the next question is for Mr. Subrato. It is by Mr. Kevin Colby, and it says, how quickly can we set up a digital workplace? I repeat, how quickly can we set up a digital workplace? Hey, Kevin, like the, this was a nice question. And is it, isn't it something that we all look for, to set up a digital workplace very quickly? So basically, like uh, in our old days, we will take near about uh, it may take months or years to set up a digital workplace. And here in Saketa, our prime motto was that, that easily configurable. The setup should be quick. So over here, like using Saketa, you can actually configure and uh, set up your digital workplace within a week or two, and is that quick? So I hope like I answered that, and with all the things in place, I guess like it is not a matter of time in Saketa to set up your digital workplace. Thank you, Shubrato, for answering this. I hope it helped. Now, you can always reach us through our website or our social media handles, and we'll make sure our experts reply to you and solve all your problems. Well, this is it for today's session. Thanks to everyone who joined in and gave us their precious time. A special thanks to Shubrato, Venkatesh, and Omri. This is it for today. I take your leave. Signing out off for today. Thank you and have a wonderful day. We hope to see you soon on our next webinar. Till then, stay safe and keep going. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your time.